Hey, what's going on everybody? So January here, and I'm here to do the review of part two of We Own The City. Now this is a HBO series. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe, click and join us over here. Let's get straight into it. I took my notes and I'm ready to go. Now we get the start of this episode with Officer Jenkins once again going down memory lane. As soon as the episode opens up, we see that he has been detained and they do have him in a detainment. Now he starts to go through all this memory of how when he came into the police force someone corrupted him and then of course it became a trickle effect and he started to corrupt others now when it flashbacks to the present time jenkins is being escorted back to his jail cell and when he passes i believe his name was jamel when he passes jamel in the hall he says jamel remember keep that mouth shut if you know what's good for you, right? So Jamel basically feels threatened and he's like, I'm tired of him always telling me to not say anything and that I need to keep my mouth shut. So when he goes in the interrogation room, he spills all tea applicable. He lets them know that the sergeant is involved in the money ring, that um, not only Jenkins G money is involved in the money ring, he sings like five canaries up in this camp. Now, when we start to follow the story of Miss Steele, Miss Steele, remember, she's a prosecutor from last week's episode. So Miss Steele is still out just trying to find out about the city and trying to find out what's really going on right now. So as Miss Steele is doing her investigation, she finds out a rapper has put out a song about Officer Herschel. Now, in the song, the rapper is actually going into deep detail about why he does not prefer this officer. Officer. So Miss Steele decides to talk to this guy, right, to get that true exclusivity. He basically says that um, I'm not going to give up much, but basically, you know, word on the street is. So by the end of this episode, Miss Steele confronts Herschel and basically letting it be known that Herschel, I'm on to you, boo. Whatever you think is going on, I'm on that ass. But Herschel currently, as in part two, is still ahead of her and he knows how to evade her and be evasive with her. So now when we go to the officers from last week who put the tracker underneath the car, um, we see that not only do they have exclusivity that this is G Money involved, they also have the name of the officer whose tracker it was, and they're questioning themselves, wondering why this officer has yet to come forward. It's getting juicy. It's getting salacious, honey. But I do want to give a side note. When I was watching this episode, something, because remember, I am a Baltimore native, something that I've seen before, but I just didn't know the meaning behind it, is when you're driving home late at night and you see a slew of men lined up on the street, I never understand. It. I thought maybe it was multiple people doing multiple crimes. No. So what these officers do, if they bring in more than four men a night, they get paid not only one paycheck, but what his partner told him is that they get paid twice. So these officers are arresting these people for quotas, petty charges. And it's sad. We get the story of Samuel. Samuels is a teenage boy who lives in Baltimore, Maryland, simply was crossing the streets. And these police ragged and tagged all over that ass. Of course, Miss Steele investigates him, but he's basically saying, well, what can you do now that you know? Are you here to help me or are you still here to criticize me? Hmm. It is a thing within the community and it doesn't just have to be Baltimore. But if you're here to, you know, interview me on my wounds and my injuries, are you also here to understand what happened and prevent it from happening again? Now, we also jump back and forth in flashbacks with Herschel and things like that. One thing I want to do is give a shout out to officer tim Yi. that's his name tim Yi. now he's a cutie i know i need to be focused on baltimore but he's a cutie and i just had to give you a shout out tim Yi. keep doing what you're doing yeah okay so in this episode we get a little bit more on who is sean sean is a detective so we get him doing his little detective scene yo he got a detective scene going so basically he was investigating a crime and he was interviewing a mom sean his character isn't doing it for me if his character doesn't step up in part three let me tell you something this show is based on real life i'm not taking away from that absolutely not this show i don't know if it's because it's based on truth it is very hard for me sometimes to get through it and i promise you this it is slow it's a slower paced series so keep this in mind you have to truly want to get the grasp the grasp and understand the story to be truly invested so i just want to let you guys know i'm doing it for you guys run them likes up run them comments up and me reviewing part three 
Please like the video, share, and let me know your thoughts on today's episode. Today's episode to me was basically showing us a glimpse into Jenkins' life. Um, also showing us that he's corrupt, but someone corrupted him. So it's, it's also showing us that it's a cycle of corruption, a cycle of pain, and a toxic situation. His co-workers are turning on him left and right. Miss Steele is trying to figure out this city still on part two. She's interviewing cops of Christmas past and she's just trying to find out everything she can. Honey, I ain't mad at her, but hurry up. And you know, we're basically, it's basically the FBI, the prosecutors, the cops, and then the street dwellers. So it's just a lot going on, but your girl will keep you locked and loaded. Stay tuned to the channel, okay? Subscribe if you're new. It's free over here. It's free to join. And I'll see you guys on my next one.